Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 24. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to continue adding animation to our main player character. But first, let's take a quick look at where we got to last time. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is just turn off um, debug mode. So I'll go into main, set debug to false, and run the game. And we can see that our player character um, runs on the spot. Um, and in this episode, one of the changes we're going to make is uh, we are going to make it so our player character only plays the walking animation when they are actually moving, and the rest of the time they should stand still. The other thing we're going to do is give ourselves more control over how our animations work. And the best way to explain that is to look at how our animations work at the moment. So inside the sprite sheet class, which we added last time, uh, let's take a look at the update method. And we can see that the way the update method works is every um, every time we call update we add the time taken since the last update to the frame count and then when the frame count is greater than the frame time we advance the current sprite by one uh, and what this is basically doing is we have a number and that number is how long we'd like to show one frame of animation for and whenever um, that for or whenever a frame has been showing for longer than uh, than that time or that number, um, we just move on to the next frame, and then this line down here makes um, it makes sure that we never run out of frames because or sprites. So when the current sprite is greater than the maximum number of sprites we have, we just set the current sprite back to one, and so in this way it will keep uh, it will keep looping. So if we look at our sprite, I'll just zoom in. Our sprite has two images, so every time our frame updates, we'll just do one, two, one, two, one, two. Once we have bigger sprite sheets with more images on, it would be useful for us to actually control the order in which our animation happens. So in this case we might want to go 2, 1, or if we had a bigger sprite sheet we might want to go 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. Um, and in order to do that we're going to introduce a new class, because we need to add a bit more logic. Uh, and that logic just it feels better and it makes our code neater if that logic is in a different place. So we'll end up moving some of our frame and sprite logic into a new class completely, and that will give us the advantage of keeping our sprite sheet class nice and simple. So by the time we finished, our sprite sheet class should only care about um, should only care about the image, uh, breaking the image down into quads, and then drawing the correct quad. Uh, the quad is just the um, the feature you use in Love for drawing part of an image or one sprite out of the entire sprite sheet. And then we'll have a new animation class which will be responsible for updating the correct frame or the correct sprite in the sprite sheet that we want to draw. Let's get started. I should add, if you um, want a better idea of how the sprite sheet class works and how all of those things are working, then you can always go back and check out episode 23 where we added the sprite sheet class. Um, Okay, let's uh, let's go. So I'm going to add a new. Um, is this the right place? Yes, I'm going to add a new class um, into our graphics folder, and this. Uh, well, I suppose it's a module. Really, we'll add a new module and we'll call it animation. Lua. Return. So we'll just do the normal scaffolding we do for modules. Um, animation dot create equals function and and because we want this to behave like a class, we need to have an instance, and we need to return that instance. Okay, and we know that our animation class will need an update function, 
and that will be very similar to the way our sprite sheet class works so it will need a um, it will need itself because it is a uh, an instance method and it will also need the game so it has access to the delta time and we also want a method of getting the current frame so we'll just call that frame and again this is an instance method so we will uh, make the first argument self let's just attach these to our instance instance.update equals update and instance.frame equals frame and this is also an opportunity to make um, to just make our code a tiny bit clearer and rename a couple of the variables from our sprite sheet uh, so it's uh, super obvious what they do so in terms of arguments for, for creating um, an animation we need frames which will be a table of um, a table of the numbers for the sprites we want to draw so if we wanted to do one two we would do where's our adventure gone if we wanted to do um, one two we would uh, pass in a table containing one and two if we wanted to do two one we would pass in two one so this is the index uh, frames is a table containing the index of all of the sprites on our sprite sheet. There we go, got there in the end. And we also want um, updates per frame. So what this is, is this is the number of um, updates in our game that we want to run for every, uh, for every frame. So because, uh, let's do updates per so what this will give us is the time we should display each um, frame for. So let's call this max frame display time. And this will be updates per frame times 1 over 60 because we know that each update should take uh, a 60th of a second. So if we want a frame to display for 15 updates, we take 15, we times it by 1 over 60, and that will give us our max frame display time. And this is what I mean about renaming things to be a bit more obvious. We will also need a current frame display time. So this is the time that the current frame has been displayed for, and we'll start it off on zero. We'll also need to uh, store the frames table uh, on our instance. So instance.frames equals frames. We have a max frame display time, a current frame display time, and a frame index. And this is just the, uh, the index of the frame we're pointing at in this uh, frames table here. And we'll start off by using the first entry in the frames table. So now when we call frame, we want to return self.frames, self.frame index. So we will return the frame which is in the frame index position. And then when we update our animation, what we want to do is say self current frame display time equals self dot uh, current frame display time plus game dot dt then we can say if self dot current frame display time is greater than self dot max frame display time then the first thing we want to do is set current frame display time back to zero because we've rolled onto a new frame, then we want to say self.frame index equals self.frame index plus one. And finally, we want to say if self.frame index is greater than the number of frames, and we get the number of frames by taking the length of self.frames. And to get the length of a table in Lua, you just use the, uh, the hash symbol in front of it. So if our frame index is greater than the number of frames, then we'll just set self.frameindex 
back to one. Okay, let's try out our animation class inside of our sprite sheet. So the first thing we will do is require it. So local animation equals require and it's in source.graphics.animation. Then we can delete these lines here and replace them with instance.animation. So we're working on our sprite sheet now. So on every instance of our sprite sheet we're going to add an animation. And to start with this animation Let's just create an animation when we create our sprite sheet. So instance.animation is equal to animation.create. And here we can pass in our frames, which will be 1, 2, and our updates per second, which will be 15. Now inside our sprite sheet update, we can get rid of all of this and replace it with self.animation update and we just need to pass in game and now when we draw our animation instead of using self.current sprite we'll use self.animation frame okay let's uh, see if it works great there we go so we are in a lot of ways back where we started but the good news is nothing has broken so the next step is to actually pass in our animation when we create our sprite sheet. So, oops, there we go. Animation, then we can just say instance.animation is equal to animation. And now we no longer need to require our animation um, in our sprite sheet class, so let's just get rid of that while we remember. So now inside of our player, let's find our player. When we create our adventurous sprite, we also need an animation. And rather than creating the animation inside the player class, I'm actually going to go into our animation class and I'm going to create um, what would be, if this was Java or, a, um, or C Sharp or something, we'd probably call these a static, um, some static properties. Uh, in Lua you don't really have static properties, but I, I sort of want to remind myself that's what they are, so I'm just going to um, name them in all capital letters. So these are basically constants, I suppose. And we're going to say animation.walk is equal to animation.create one, oops, one comma two. So the frames are frame one and frame two, and our updates per second is 15. And for an animation.stand, we'll do animation.create. Um, and then here we'll just have a single frame at the moment, which is one. And again, we'll just set our update time to 15. And the reason we're doing this is because for all of our sprite sheets, we can have the same, um, we can use the same frames for walking and the same frames for standing. And this will just make things a bit simpler in the long run. So now inside of our player, let's pull in our animation equals require source.graphics. Animation, and then when we create our sprite sheet, we can just do animation.walk to start with. And now, hopefully, if we run our game, oops, animation, that's not quite right. Player line 13, so missing an M. There we go. Again, okay, so now we have our walking player. And if we change this to animation.stand, our player is just standing still. Great, so when we first create the player, we want them to be standing still, so let's leave that as it is. 
And now let's add a method to our sprite sheet for updating the animation. So let's just call this set animation function. We'll take self because it's an instance method, and then a new animation. And what we want to do here is to say if self dot new animation is not equal to so this is the not equals uh, symbol in Lua. So we're saying if the new animation is not equal to the current animation, then we want to go ahead and set the animation to the new animation self dot uh, ah, self sorry self dot animation equals new animation so this should not be self dot new animation there we go if new animation is not equal to so if the animation isn't already equal to the uh, new animation we want to go ahead and update it that makes a bit more sense. Okay, and now inside of our keyboard methods for our player, which are inside of I think logic AI movement keyboard movement, we can add in another if statement down here. So we already have a value called moving that tells us if a player is moving or not. So down here we can say if moving then entity uh, what would this be? Entity dot sprite set animation and we can say animation dot walk. Else so if we're not moving we want to set the animation to animation.stand and we need to include animation so let's uh, go ahead and require that file so attempt to call set animation a nil value so this is uh, Probably because, yep, uh, not on animation, so on sprite sheet we need to add a add set animation to the instance equals set animation. There we go. Okay, so our player starts out standing still, and then when we move them, they start walking. When we stop moving, our player stops moving or stops walking. There we go. So let's just turn debug mode back on because that will show us what we uh, still need to do. So our bounding box for our player is still too big. It's the size of the sprite sheet rather than each individual sprite. So that's uh, something we will fix next time. And it would also be nice to add in some more animations for our player next time. And uh, that is now as simple as adding more sprites to the sprite sheet and then creating some more animation classes. So we'll cover that in the next episode. Uh, but we are done for now, so thank you for watching. If you're enjoying the series and have a couple of seconds to spare, please do click uh, subscribe or like. It does help me out a great deal. Thanks very much for watching, and bye for now.